into God's house and into God's presence, the Lord himself welcomes us. We pray and trust that today too the Lord will renew us, the Lord will strengthen us. And we also trust that the Holy Spirit will prepare us, prepare our hearts as we fellowship through the sacraments of uh, the Lord's Supper. And so we pray and trust that you will, the worship this morning will renew and prepare us as we commune with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Receive God's words from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. I appeal to you, brothers, by the message of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewer of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you with joy. We come gladly. We come to be renewed, and we trust that your spirit will move in our midst. Your spirit 
we move through the words of yours, the scriptures. Your spirit, we move through the songs and in the sacrament of our Lord's Supper to renew us, to strengthen us, and to prepare us. Father God, take your place in our hearts and in this sanctuary. In your name we pray, and together all God's people say, Amen. We invite you to join us in worship through songs. Stand if you are able. the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at his table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord Oh 
Please be seated. Welcome once again to worship at Monocacy Valley Church, either here in person or online on our YouTube channel. For our online folks, if you haven't already done so, this would be a good time to stop the video and prepare your own communion elements of bread and juice for later in worship. If you're here in the sanctuary after worship, please join us for coffee and fellowship in the cafe. Our inclement weather notices, if any, will be posted on our social media sites. You'll find such information on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our website. If you haven't already done so, please pick up your 2022 charitable giving statements out by the door to the sanctuary. Pastor Isaiah is beginning a new virtual prayer ministry via Zoom will start on Tuesday, February 28th at noon and run for about an hour. Please speak with Pastor Isaiah if you are interested in participating and we'll add you to the Zoom list. Tomorrow evening, February 6th, the Monday night Bible study and fellowship will meet at 7 p.m. Our online Bible studies will be the women's Bible study meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m and the men will next meet on Saturday morning, February 18th at 8.30 a.m. For our online congregation, we sincerely welcome your contributions to the ministries of Monocacy Valley Church. You may give safely and securely on our Tithe Lee online giving site. And once again, you'll find Tithe Lee information available on our Facebook page, our website, and our YouTube channel. And now let's return to worship as we receive our tithes and offerings.
to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the song of God disclosed The sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is real. but still very relevant song. Children's time, children's time, children's time. Yeah, it's children's time, as you can see. Uh oh. Good morning. How are you? Do you? I have a question for you. Do you know that? You can come forward. We have other friends who are at the back. Come join us. <laughs> yes, Dixie is here. Hi, Dixie. Good morning, how are you? Okay. One of the things I would like to share with you is um, how God thinks about us, including children. Do you know how much God loves children? Don't write in my Bible, Michael. A lot. A lot, yes. I agree. And here is a passage that shows us how much God cares for you, loves us, okay? Let me read it. Listen to this. It says, Now they were bringing infants. That is Luke chapter 18, verse 16. Here. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to read? Mm -hmm. oh. I want to read. You want to read. Okay. Starts here. Me too. Oh, you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can take turns. Yes. Let the children come to me. Yeah, really. No, they were bringing even in infants. infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Rebuked them. But Jesus called. 
them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them. Hinder them. Okay. For, for to such. For, for to such belong the kingdom of God. True. Yeah. For to such belongs the kingdom of God to it. Do you want to read too? Yes. Okay. Can you read for us this line? Today, the joy will be the best. Okay. Thank you. So, that is how much Jesus cares and loves us. He says, let the children come to me. Let the children come to me and do not hinder them. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Did you hear his question? No. Bless you. So Jesus loves all children, all children, every child, okay? Including adults as well. So he loves you, he cares for you. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God is for children as well, okay? So today we are here to learn about the God's, I mean, to learn about the kingdom of God as we worship here in the nursery. But the elements before us are also about God and his kingdom. They are teaching us how much God loves and cares for us. So shall we pray? Loving God in heaven, we thank you for our children, those who are in the pew, and for Dixie, Mike, and Rebecca. We pray that today, too, you will nurture them, you will grow them, disciple them, let them grow up and become um, members of your church. They are the church of tomorrow, and use them to multiply and expand your kingdom. Help us to support them as they develop, as they grow in their faith. In your name we pray, and together all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may continue with worship in the nursery. You want to stay with me? We can play after church, okay? For our scripture reading this morning, turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10, verse 1 through 6, I read on our behalf. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of peace Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving Father, we ask that you will illumine this scripture for our understanding. We trust you have your will for us in your word. And so encourage faith. Encourage us and mold us with your word. Loving Father, we pray, thanking you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we have salvation. 
And so, Father, we are grateful. We pray that you will equip us on how to live for you and how to serve you and how to participate in the expansion of your kingdom here on earth. So, loving Father, we pray and ask that you will renew us, encourage us, and strengthen us by your word. Even as we gather, Father, we rejoice for those who are rejoicing, for those celebrating birthdays, for those celebrating anniversaries, and even those who are remembering this day. Lord, we pray that you will surround them again with your grace and assure them of your love. We celebrate with those who are celebrating recoveries from sicknesses, illness, and other forms. Father, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for answered prayers. For those who are still in the hospital, we pray that you assure them of your presence and heal them. You spoke and say that by your stripes we are healed. And so, Father, provide healing to those listed in our bulletin this morning. Loving God, we think of those who are in retirement communities, those near us and those far from us, those in Spring Ridge, Meadow County, and other places. Lord, be closer to them. Some of them are lonely. They don't have anyone to visit them, no one to talk to them, but be their God, friend, and fill the vacuum created by absence of family. We think of those at Klein House Hospice. We pray for the staff, and we pray for those who are there, that loving God, you will be with them, even in times such as this. Be with family. Be with those who are grieving. Comfort them. Loving God, we pray for our leaders, those who lead us in our schools, schools that are around us, Ogdale Elementary, Ogdale Middle School, Ogdale High School, Promising Horizons Learning Center. We pray for those leaders, staff and students, that you will bless them, lead them, guide them. Let them rule and govern with the fear of you. And those who lead us, county officials, state governor and governors, our elected representatives and, and the president, vice president, as well as the cabinet. Loving Father, every day they have many decisions to make. We pray that you will guide them, guide those decisions, help them with ideas so that they can rule in such a way that your name is glorified and honored. We think of those who serve us, those in the military and other forms of services. Lord, be with them, be with them guide them, help them, be with their families as well, and we pray that they will find joy and satisfaction in what they do. We pray for your church, oh Lord, it is your church, we are your body, that you will rule your church 
and govern your church and perfect your church in righteousness and prepare us, bring us home. We pray for your kingdom to come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In your name we pray and together all God's people say, Amen. As a worshiping body, we have been looking at spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines. So far, we have looked at the word, scriptures. We have looked at prayer. Last week, we considered worship. This morning, I would like us to look at listening, listening, listening. The discipline of listening to God because God speaks to us. The parable of the good shepherd describes the relationship between shepherd or the chief shepherd and his sheep in terms of calling out speech, listening to the speech. And that is what I would like us to focus on this morning. We have looked at this parable from different angles the last three years, different settings. Today we come back to it looking at this relationship of calling and hearing, listening to God's voice. Hearing or listening to the voice of the shepherd is the center of the verses 4 and 5, which I would like to focus on. You see, the act of listening must be continuing, must be continuing. The act of listening must be renewing, must be continuous and renewing. It's not a one-time circumstance when you are listening to God. It's not a one-time circumstance, but it must be constant, constant. Not because God changes. No, he doesn't change. Or not because his word might apply differently depending on the circumstance, not necessary. You see, though we are redeemed, we still need to feed and live in intimate relationship with Jesus Christ through calling and listening to his voice daily. Hence, we must listen to his infallible truth every day. Think of the many words we encounter in a day via emails, airwaves, in print and verbal. The information we receive, and sometimes we take that to be the standard statement on anything at all, coming from sometimes our leaders. How those words sometimes pull us in different directions on many issues so there must be a clarifying voice from whom we must all listen to daily and from time to time. And this is the voice of the chief shepherd, our savior, Lord Jesus Christ. His voice or the voice of Christ must filter the words we hear. And the voice of Jesus Christ must serve to inform and to guide us, especially as believers. If you look at John chapter 8, verse 47, that passage says, whoever is of God hears the word of God. Whoever is of God hears the word of God. So the word of God is a living document that we have to listen to every day. John 8, 47 aligns with John 4, 10, where Christ says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice, for, his no, for they know his voice. We are endowed with the God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, 
so that we can listen to God. And it also means that we cannot live healthy spiritual lives without listening to God. In order to live healthy spiritual lives, we must listen to God. One of the saints of the church, St. Augustine, says, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you. In other words, and related to the art of listening, only when we take directives from God that we make the right decision, thereby finding, find rest. So the only way we can maintain our spiritual stamina is to listen to God. And John 8, 47, the concluding portion of that verse says, the reason why you do not hear them, that is God's word, is that you are not of God. But if we are of God, which we are, because we are endowed with the Holy Spirit, we are the redeemed people of God, we are forgiven. So as Christians... The art of listening to God is a way to live by. If we are of God, then we must listen to God's word. You see, at verse 3 of John, chapter 10 says, The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Each one of us, he calls us by name by name. We are such a small congregation here, but I'm not sure I can call all your name, all of you by names, no. See how few we are. Um, I know Stephanie, she's sitting there, and, and John. But he knows us by name and calls out by name which means we are missing something. He's calling and I'm not listening. He's calling you and you are not listening. Or you are not hearing him. Friends, we must be led by God's word and his word is his voice. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. According to this, Jesus is calling us individually and corporately. Because Christ knows you by name and calls you by name as well. And he has a message for us, for you, for us as a congregation and as a, den as a denomination. He has a word for you as a family unit. God speaks to us. But the question is, do we have time to listen? We can study God's word, pray and worship, but are we really listening to God's speech and communion of himself to us? See, in order to listen to God, we must quiet our souls, get rid of chatter in our heads, minds, and avoid distractions. And to some extent, you can blame it on the Protestant Reformation because we threw out too much stuff including good stuff, such as meditation, taking time away to be quiet. And many of us don't like it when we are quiet. I can tell in my house, whenever I am quiet for some time, everyone thinks, hmm, there is something wrong. Are you okay? Are you okay? I say, I'm okay. We don't like it. We don't like silence. We don't like silence. But look, we hear God in his word when we quiet our souls and come to him, spend time in solitude. Solitude is a way to listen to God. Solitude. See, God speaks to us through this medium. And in order to listen to him, we must take time to meditate. Meditation must center on God with a focus on God's word. Sometimes taking a passage, 
Just reading through it slowly, spending time in that passage. Let's say Psalm 23 or any of the Psalms or a verse, Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that you are God. Be still and know that I am God. Meditate on such a passage. Let that passage digest, settle in. It becomes part of you and you know the meaning and the impact. Then you are able to apply um, Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. Through meditation, you are able to fill your souls with God's empowering presence, feel his everlasting love, and the joy of union with God settles in. You hear God through this encounter. This can become a regular rhythm for you or for us. We hear God when his word takes root in us. I like this passage and it always challenged me in Exodus 33, 11. It says, the Lord, used, the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Have we been in that moment where you know that you are talking to God face to face? It's not impossible, it is possible. It is possible. We cannot listen or have that conversation unless we create time. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend. Like you speak to your spouse or your children or friends. So one of the ways to listen to God is to spend time in meditation in his word. Then God will speak to us and so silence is important. We hear God in silence. We hear God in silence. See, generally life is full of interruptions. For example, it is extremely difficult to avoid noise. We are surrounded by sound, left and right, even now, the highway. Sometimes we are the agent. We produce it, but most of the time it comes from others, from neighbors, phones, other gadgets in our homes. It is difficult to avoid noise unless you remove yourself from a crowded spot to a secluded space with, a, with the intention to remain silent for some time. In ancient cultures, silent was a virtue. And even today, there are some people who encourage us along with the scripture, to be silent. Abraham Lincoln once said, better to remain silent and be thought of, to be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. <laughs> Another author says, it is in silence that God is known and through mysteries that he declares himself. And bishop and teacher, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, whom I like to read, says, we are silent at the beginning of the day because God should have the first word and we are silent before going to sleep because the last word also belongs to God. That is morning and evening prayer. Catherine Hook says, true silence, true silence is the key to the immense and flaming heart of God. It is the beginning of a divine courtship that we end only in the immense, creative, fruitful, loving silence of final union with the beloved. See, silence is desirable, and the scriptures encourage the discipline of silence because it is the way to listen to God. Habakkuk in 2.20 says, The Lord is in his holy temple. Let the whole earth be silence. How do we do that? And what is the significance? He says, silence creates space and mindset, mindset to be attentive to God. This practice is essential considering the distractions and lack of time, so we ought to cultivate this practice. And I'm I'm sure not every one of us has the luxury to take days or weeks to go on a, on a retreat for the purpose of being silent. 
or to practice solitude. Not many of us. But you can practice solitude even within a crowd with a busy schedule by being attentive and reflective. Silence must accompany prayer and meditation. So we listen to God through silence. We listen to God through silence. And sometimes you create space to renew yourself. And there are times when I like all those old teachings, Bible teachers like James Boyce, whom I've benefited from him tremendously, even though he's gone, he's gone from us. But he has a radio ministry, and sometimes through, he used to preach, and he's recorded sermons. Sometimes I would spend time just listening to his advice, to his preaching and teaching. He was a good expository uh, uh, teacher. So that's what we create space, just, not just creating space to be quiet, but to focus on God and finding something, a Bible, or scriptures, or prayers to assist us is important. So we hear God speak to us through that forum. And sometimes we hear God through other saints. We hear God through other saints. There are times when we may not understand what God is saying to us. So we ought to seek audience with those who are matured in faith. Those who are matured in faith. And the example I've given, like listening to other Bible teachers such as James, boys, sometimes help me. It helps. So maturity in faith is not by age necessarily, but those who are matured in faith, these are people who, by their faith, they have wisdom. They have rooted themselves in faith, in thought, union with Christ, and the work of the Holy Spirit is evident, so we can listen to them. You see, Moses encountered this but we can learn from this is Moses' encounter with the burning bush. He saw the bush burning. It was a strange thing, isn't it? And the scripture describes it this way. He turned aside. Turned aside. He turned towards God. That scripture says, and Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside. God spoke to him, directed him, turning aside. But that turning aside sometimes comes in a different way. You see, Moses turned to God, sought answers for his confusion, and God answered Moses, clarified his doubts. But look at Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3. When God called Samuel, he did not know what was happening. That scripture says, and the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Verse 8. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived the Lord, that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. So sometimes you you will be in that position to clarify certain words for other fellow believers. That is, sometimes God speaks to us through others. How do we know that what we are hearing is the actual voice of God? That must confirm, must align 
with what God has revealed in Scripture. God will not tell you anything that is contrary to his will, which is already in Scripture. So God speaks to us through God's own word. We must hear, and that word must align with the Scriptures. That is, when in doubt, we must seek help from others as well, those who are matured in faith. And that is a challenge to all of us to be in a position where we can help other fellow believers. That is, those who have a sustained relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ will help us to clarify doubts and help others listen to the clear voice and word of God. We hear God in his word in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we must cultivate the practice of listening to God for ourselves that will enrich your life. It will enrich my spiritual life. And we have the support of the Holy Spirit who is willing to teach us, to guide us. God has equipped us with the Holy Spirit to help us listen to his word. I'd like to conclude with this prayer from St. Augustine. He says, let us pray. Alas for me, through your own mercy, for dealings with me. O oh Lord my God, tell me what you are to me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Say it so that I can hear it. My heart is listening, Lord. Open the ears of my heart and say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let me run towards this voice and seize hold of you. Do not hide your face from me. Let me die so that I may see it. For not to see it would be death to me indeed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And together, all God's people say, Amen. At this time, I invite you to prepare our hearts as we commune with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And if you believe in your heart that Christ died on the cross and rose again for the forgiveness of your sins, you are welcome to this table. It's Christ's own table. Friends in the Lord, on the night that he was betrayed, Christ took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it saying, this is my body that is given for you. In the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I come. Friends in the Lord, come forward and take the elements and return back to your seat, seats and we can partake them together. Come and be served.
for the forgiveness of our sins. The blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Drink it. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that you have redeemed us and you continue to renew our faith in you. So strengthen us by partaking of this sacrament. Encourage us and heal us in the name of your risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for our closing song? Oh,
grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And together, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Return home in peace.